When I think I was 15, I did my first line of cocaine and I was just mesmerized by it. I literally was an extremist. I wanted to be high 24-7. I was going to school high, leaving school at lunch to go get high. Wes Morgan grew up a preacher's kid. I lived in a healthy environment. I had a true example of a loving mother and father, but I still got off track. I got sideswiped. I didn't know the telltale signs, and um, I didn't realize that that's what it was because uh, they were raised as infants to serve the Lord and to love the Lord. Wes spent time in juvenile detention. Then at 17, he was charged with armed robbery. One night he was high on Valium when he threatened a group of people with an ax. I remember waking up, it was a Sunday morning. I woke up and I was still drunk. My mother's waking me up. She says, Wes, I don't know what you have done, but the cops have called here this morning and we have got to take you to the police station. I will never forget that Sunday that we walked in there. We didn't, we had no clue that at that point, would he be taken to prison and we'd never see him again? Wes was no stranger to the judicial system, but since the judge knew his parents, Wes was allowed to enroll in a Bible-based rehabilitation program. It was great for me because um, I was put in a position to where I was put in classes that taught me the Word of God. Wes continued on to Bible college where he met Betsy. The two married, and Wes entered the ministry, pursuing his dream of becoming a singer. And I thought that we would just move here, and life would be wonderful and grand, and work at the church, and you know, start a family, and everything would be great. It would be like a fairy tale. And when we got married, we clashed. Before long, Wes was using drugs again. I would literally snort drugs. I would snort cocaine until I literally, my nose would swell up. I couldn't breathe. So I couldn't stop him from doing it, but I purposed that I would make it inconvenient for him. I hounded him constantly. I was always screaming at him, trying to get him to stop. Wes was high on cocaine one day when a driver wouldn't let him merge. He started to pursue the other car in the midst of a high-speed chase. Wes wrecked the car. We hit an embankment, probably running about 85, 90 miles an hour. We hit a uh, concrete wall. Wes's friends were life flighted out. Wes walked away from the wreck and straight into jail. It was the end of my rope. And I remember asking, um, asking one of the security guards, the correctional officers, to get me a Bible. And uh, I grabbed that Bible and I didn't, I didn't depart from that Bible for eight days solid. I was so tired of always watching my life slip through my fingers, ne never able to get a hold of Wes. And so I think that God heard a silent scream coming from me, from my spirit, get me out of this. I've got to get free. Wes rededicated his life to Christ that night in the jail cell. He was instantly delivered from his addictions. He did not leave or go anywhere without me or his mom and dad or, you know, someone trustworthy. And that's when I knew it was real. But I believe that God completely heals you that because with all of the stuff that my wife and I have been through, this is absolutely amazing how healed we are. I know that I could have walked away and now I can say that it was worth it. I, you know, the kind of life we have now, we have such a good family and great kids and we love each other and we love to be together. It's hard to imagine really how bad it was. I mean, it almost doesn't seem real at times. Today, Wes is the associate minister in his parents' church. Also a musician, he tours performing songs off his recently released debut album. People who have gone down as far as I go down never come back around. I'm smelling roses every day. I'm taking advantage of not having a nag in my belly to go get high. You know what that feels like for me? It's like that itself is euphoria. I mean, the fact that I don't have to go get high when I leave here right now, is a, that's a miracle. Here you hear me when I say that is a miracle because 
I'm free. What does God say? Come, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they'll be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they can be as wool. Come, let's reason. You know, God does not delight in punishing you. God does not delight in sending you to hell. God does not delight in seeing you destroy your life. And He will literally move heaven and earth to see you come into the kingdom of God because He loves you and you are precious. Do you know how precious your soul is? You are worth everything in the entire world, all the oil, the gold, the silver, everything in the world. You are more precious than all of it. And you say, if I'm that valuable, why am I throwing my life away? And the answer is, only you can find out because God says, I don't want that to happen. I will reclaim you. I will redeem you. I'll give you a new start. You want to be cleaned up? You want to be free from drugs or alcohol? Or you want to be free from hatred and bitterness and envy and all the things that are going on in your life? You want to be free? If you do, I want you to pray a simple prayer with me, and I want you to turn it over to Jesus. And from that moment on, you belong to Him, and your life will belong to Him. And He'll give you a brand new life and a joy unspeakable and full of glory. Come, God says, let's talk about it. Let's get together. Come, let's reason. Whatever you've done, I'm going to forgive you. Whatever it is, I'm going to forgive you. Bow your head and pray with me right now. I believe there's somebody, you've, you've had an abortion and you have this, this guilty feeling in your heart. God's going to, going to take away that guilty feeling. He's going to wash you and make you clean. Now, pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, I come before you today and I bring you my fears and my hopes, my dreams, and I bring you my sin and all that I've done. And I lay it, Lord, at the feet of the cross of Jesus. And Lord, I take you at this moment as my Savior. And I believe, Lord, that you rose from the dead. And so this day I make you the Lord of my life. And from this moment on, come into my heart. Live your life in me. And I will live for you and I will serve you all the days of my life. Thank you, Jesus, that you've heard my prayer. And thank you, Jesus, that you have come in to my heart. I want to pray for you now. Father, for those who prayed, let the power of God touch them. May the anointing of the Holy Spirit fill them from this moment on. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you prayed with me, I have something I want to give you. because It's important that you kind of get started right. If you have accepted the Lord, it's a new beginning, a new life. And I have something called a higher calling. I did a 73-minute CD. It's got all these things in here that you need to know. Plus, there's a little booklet that has over 60 scriptures in it from the Bible, verses in the Bible, that will help you. I'll give this to you free. If you prayed with me just then, all you do is call in and say, Look, I prayed with Pat, that guy on TV, and I have given my heart to Jesus. Just pick up your phone, call in. It's a toll-free number, 1-800-759-0700. The Lord is moving in Jesus' name.